Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to yet another great edition of Topic Time with Harrison Young. Boy, the episodes just keep rolling along. I'm loving it. Uh, another cold spring day, but we are sure heating things up in here tonight with some awesome guests. But before we get to them, must read the underwriters, and then we will do the show. We've got a new one, Fine Lines Barber Studio in Raynham. Another new one, WS Electronics and Repair, for computers and cell phones in Brockton. We got Shovel Shop Spirits right here in Easton. We got Shore Shine Professional Detailing in Abington. We got another new one, Rivers Auto Incorporated in Abington. Uh, we got George Greenhouses and Florist Shop in Brockton. We got Close Clinic Dry Cleaning in Whitman, where Top of Time fans get 10% off. We got Smoke and Ashes Tobacco Corporation in Abington, with stores in Abington, Hanson, Hanover, Pembroke, Weymouth, and Whitman. We got T. Martini and Sun Floor Covering in Abington, and we got Chapin Sheds in Whitman. And we'll thank you guys very much. And on that note, we will now start the show. Here we go. Okay, again, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another great edition of Topic Time with Harrison Young. Uh, well, in the art of self-defense, these two gentlemen here rank pretty high. This is David Safer and uh, Master Maldoon, Master Ray Maldoon, and uh, we're going to talk to them tonight, look at some footage of what they've accomplished. Uh, I believe the, uh, the, these two guys own a, uh, co-own a dojo, is that correct, up in north of Boston? We belong to a uh, dojo, belong. yes. Okay. And of course, like with every guest I have on in here, we're going to check out what their history is, how they got into where they're at now. You guys may remember I had on Sean Burke a few a couple of months ago. He's a martial arts expert. I don't know if you guys know him, but he's, he's a stunt man in a lot of films. And these two guys, he gets to not do acting, and that's cool. Um, so, well, David, you're the, you're, the, Dave, you're the one I invited on initially. So let's talk to you first about your history. How did you get into martial arts? And, uh, and then we'll work our way to the master here. So go ahead. Well, it was funny, you, you ask, uh, yeah, on the way up here, I was talking to Master Ray and, and okay. we were discussing how that happened. Okay. And, uh, my father was a huge influence on that. My father was uh, very friendly with the, uh, a, a teacher at the time. His name was Bruce Marshall from Salem. Okay. And, uh, and the martial arts teacher. He was, yeah, he, okay. was, he was phenomenal. And, okay. Uh, he, was, he was karate. Yep. And uh, I took that for several years. And um, after that, I, I had let it go, and, and it was always burning in my, in my belly to, to come back and take it. And, okay. and, and eventually, I worked my way into Taekwondo later on in life. And One question, before yeah. just backing up a little bit. When you were doing karate before, what, mm -hmm. what degree belt did you wear? Did I ended up modest? getting around blue or blue belt. Okay. Yep. So right. I was there for a couple of years, and I, I earned, earned my blue belt. And this was when you were, what, in high school age? Around there? High school age, yes. Okay. And then you and then you stopped it, and then you decided you loved it so much you couldn't. Oh, yes. get, And then you went to Taekwondo. Now, quick, I, I have a lot of friends that are martial artists, and I'm all, I've never I've never even asked before. But now that I'm now that we're talking, I'm wondering is Taekwondo considered more of a more of an intense martial art than karate or? Um, karate and Taekwondo are different. Karate yep. karate is more of punching. Yep. Uh, where Taekwondo is more of kicking. Okay, well, I understand. Um, all right. Well, now, Master, Master Ray, talk talk about you. How did you guys like hook up, and how did you get first talk about how you got started, and then how you well, guys hooked up? It's kind of similar to him. Okay. I started when I was young, k karate, yep. which is Japanese, right? Shotokan, to be specific, and I took it for several years. I didn't attain my black belt then. I got up to right below it, brown belt. Okay. Then I took some years off. Okay. And my daughter was in a scholarship program. Okay, where? At Mass in uh, Peabody. Okay. And Master Hong, Grandmaster Hong, was starting a, a new school up. Okay. So she got selected as one of the scholarship attainees, and uh, I went along with her. Oh, cool. Okay. And I always, I always liked the martial arts, anyways. And yep. So I'm watching her, and I says, "Well, I could do this," you know. Wow. So. I joined. Okay. Two months later, she quit. How long ago was this? <laughs> About 16, 17 years ago. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I became very in involved in, into okay. it. Okay. So 
Did you guys know each other back then? No. No. Okay, so how'd, how'd you guys meet up and become, you know, partners in crime in this, in this case, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase? Yeah. We met about six years ago. So, well, no, actually, no, we met in... Uh, you were bringing Max. Two, yeah, Max, so 2011. So, okay. Yeah, so, so seven, 2011, seven years I was ago. bringing my son. Eight years ago, actually. Yeah, okay. yeah, I was bringing my son. Okay, cool, okay, you both have kids and they're both uh, all martial arts. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, all right, now... I have to ask too, I mean, as someone who got bullied a lot in school, and I took a judo course when I was in sixth grade, and, mm -hmm. and all that ended up happening was I got my collarbone busted, mm -hmm. and because, I don't, and I don't know if you guys have been at any judo at all, and I know, you know, that you know, I'm sure you know it just like you know the, I mean, you know of it, and you know how it, uh, you know, how it entails Correct. For, for people. Um, what happened with me was I was a heavy kid in sixth grade, the instructor, you know, when judo, he's, judo was flipping people over on the mat, yeah. but he, I was so heavy that even my, most of the kids in the class couldn't flip me, even the instructor couldn't flip me. I was like 130 pounds, and that's hard to, you know, I was, you know, I was a, I was a, ch a chunky adolescent, to say the least. Um, and then one night, some big kid came in, he was a ringer, the kids were, they were like, the groups of the kids were like 8, eight to 15. This guy looked about 25, I don't know how <laughs> old he was, but, and, it, and, it, and, the, and the instructor had no qualms about pitting one kid against another, regardless of age. And his kids were in the class too. He had a son and a daughter, so he'd have us, he'd have us all pair off. So he immediately, he pitted me up against this guy. This guy kept flipping me around like a sack of potatoes, and finally I just fell wrong, and my right collarbone went snap, and I, you know, to this day there's a scar there if they did an x-ray. It's not hurting anymore, but it was very painful. So now I'm wondering, does, I mean, the, what's the initiative to start doing martial arts for me, or try it, was being, you know, being picked on a lot. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm just curious because it would, it would seem to me that the reason which somebody would want to be able to, def, you know, be able to take care of themselves in that way would be the most likely thing. I mean, but you, I'm just curious if you, if you don't want to, you know, I'm just curious if you don't mind answering those questions about this. Not at all. No, I was uh, the exact same, only different. Yep. I was the skinny kid. Okay. I was the skinny kid getting bullied. Okay. And uh, I had the kid down the street uh, bullying me. Yep. He, he would strangle me every day while oh, I was delivering papers. That's right. It was fun. Yeah. And the kids on the school bus would beat me up. Yeah. And, uh, wow. And then later on, I ended up having an anger issue. My father knew Bruce Marshall in karate, and he thought that would be a good idea for me to go. And, yeah. And I learned, uh, I learned martial arts to, enough to protect myself. There you go. And, uh, okay. that, that's how I got into that. Okay, at the beginning. How about you? I right. never got bullied. I just well, sometimes uh, it's possible to like the martial arts because it's a good discipline. It's great. It's great fitness. That's why I like it. Right. And, okay. Uh, it's nice. It's refreshing to hear that you didn't get bullied. Well, the best thing to do, yeah, if you're confronted, is to walk away. If or you avoid can, it. right. Even if you have skill, right, like we do. Well, I especially mean, uh, if you have skill, because now you because now you're lethal weapons. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Technically, yeah, yeah. we are both registered at right. the World Taekwondo. Federation headquarters in right. uh, Seoul, Korea. Okay, so so it's all Taekwondo is all Korean and it's three thousand years old. That's that's awesome. Um, and and I know that there's a type of karate called Kenpo karate. That's that's yes. Chinese, right? That's that um, th that that, sure that, that is part of karate. Yes. Okay. Kenpo and Shotokan. Okay, I know there's so many different you know, yeah. varieties. I've got you know I I work out. I don't. I've never. Since that judo episode, I've not gone to a gym at all. I mean, not going to, uh, to not taking a self defense course, but I have worked out at many gyms, and mm -hmm. a lot of my friends were are into martial arts, and they mm -hmm. and they demonstrate. They put on the you know they, they kick the bag pretty good, uh, and it's and it's incredible. All right, so now you're you're registered in Seoul, in the what do they call that? The hall? It's called the Kuki One. It's the World Taekwondo Federation headquarters. Okay, all right. So how do you guys, now you guys basically, do you, you don't run this dojo, you're just members, is that true? Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, Master Ray is actually a teacher there. Oh, he is, okay. Yes. And what about you, do you teach anywhere? I, I, I don't teach anywhere, I can teach there, I have. Okay. It's basically, depends on what Master Hong wants us to do. Okay. Ma Master Hong is the one who runs, runs it and owns it. Yeah. And then Master Ray, Master Jen, and Master Mike are the three masters there. Okay. And then there's the black belts, and then you go down down okay. the chain. So I, being having a black belt, I'm able to, to teach. Okay. However, he, is, he is a higher belt than Right, that. I understand, okay. Um, so, you spend, I take it you spend a, a lot of time at the gym, doing, you know, at the do, they, it is the dojo, and you pretty yes. much, it's your, it's your life now, it's your life's work, right? 
Yes. Okay. Yes. It's actually it's actually called a dojane. Doji. Oh, oh there dojo you go. is Japanese. Yes, I know. That's karate. Is that true? Or is that yes, just that's being... correct. No, that's karate. Yep. Okay. Kenpo is actually known as the way of the fest. But he said dojane, and I'm thinking join like Joe Do, Joan Do, Jane Do. No, Jane, no, Do Jang. Oh, Do Jang. All right. J A N G. Okay, I yep. thought it said Jane. Yep. Do Jang. Yep. Okay. Yep. These are things we pick up along the way. Yep. All right, well, in terms of like um, matches and stuff, do you, do you do demos like travel all around the area, Boston, and the different places? We do, and we do tournaments. Tournaments, that's um, what I meant, tournaments. I don't, well, Dave went to Korea. Okay. And uh, it's usually national tournaments. Like, yeah. Uh, they have one in Virginia. Okay. Uh, they're all over the country, really. Right, mm -hmm. right. It, so, when you it, say they went to the Korea, you're talking about well, the yeah. masters from the... Correct. From our Dojang. Okay, your uh, Dojang. It's usually the younger participants that go. Okay. We, we've done we've done local ones yeah. around here, and we've done breaking. He's he's probably better at the breaking than I am. Breaking the bricks. Yeah. Break, okay. We've, we're both able to break bricks. Yep. We're both able to break wood. Yep. Um, we, we've both had competition. Yep. Master Ray is obviously much better at it than I am. Okay. Um, but we we, we like to. Uh, to push each other. I understand we do those. you push each other like Gehrig and Ruth. Yes. I yes. Understand. Perfect. Now, yes. I've always wondered how do you condition yourself to be able to do that, to be able to break bricks? Was it what is it? Was it, was it, was it any weight lift, weight training, or ninety no. percent focus? Okay. Yeah. Um, we, we you, I understand what you're saying. Right. Most people would think it would be strength. Most people right. would think that okay, I, I'm a big guy, whatever. I, I, you break a brick. It's not that at all. Yeah. Okay. It's really, because I've, I've, tr it's almost like golf. When you go to when you go to swing a club, you know, yeah. and, you, and you try to put all your weight into it, usually the ball goes about three feet. Right. When you when you let it, you know, just relax and let it go, it goes three hundred feet. Right. It's the same. It's the same okay. thing with, with taekwondo. Okay. And breaking. But still, it must take a lot of practice, and I mean, it's something you kind of have to teach yourself. You can't yes. be taught how to do it. Uh, well, you, you're taught from the beginning of, of how to do it so that your shoulder is, is in a certain spot, your okay. hand is in a certain spot. Okay. You know, otherwise you would get hurt. Right. Each uh, belt testing. Yeah. Each time there's belt testing, they have to demonstrate a break. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the higher up you go, yep. the more... The more bricks you use? More. Well, they usually use We wood. start at wood. Start at wood, bricks okay. Are, uh, yeah, bricks are more for, 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 <laughs> right. for, the, for, for the more uh, advanced students. Okay. All right. So what about like, so what, 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 how do you coordinate your, your bodies to work to, to become, as, you know, as, as uh, self, self uh, endowed as they are for this sort of thing? Training. Training. And what does training consist of? Well, we have our routines. Yep. And it's, then we get into technique. Okay. And like I said, the, the higher up you go in the rank, yeah. the more technique, the more advanced technique you learn. Okay. And, uh, it's just repetition, repetition. Repetition. And, uh, okay. And, and it's something that, it, I mean, there's, there's no size limit. And, and when I say that, I mean small people can do it as well Absolutely as anybody. Absolutely not. Yeah. Anybody can. Yeah, because I know, can. I mean, it, but I'm I could get you to break a brick. Um, yeah, okay. That's encouraging just to hear. Yeah, I could, <laughs> I, we could do it. Okay. We could do it. Without, yeah. without, without, we could do it. Without breaking my wrist first. Well, you're going with your palm, so oh, you won't have to worry about your wrist. You're not, you're not, you're not doing. You yeah, know, that's that's, that, the that's a little bit. Yeah, that's right. more for show. That looks right. nice and so forth. No, most of it's by by palm. By the palm. Yeah. Yeah, right. I understand. So I heard from a martial arts yeah. expert that that this that's part of the hand is the most lethal part. Correct. Okay, not the Correct. fist. Correct. Not the knuckles, but the but the lower that, part. That, here. that yeah, that can be. The, everything can be used as a weapon. Okay. Now what about now? But this guy here that I'm talking about, and sadly he's no longer with us. He mm -hmm. took his own life. I, you know, he yeah. had a lot of stuff going on. But what he would do, and he was on he was on the TV show Chronicle once back in yeah. 2008. We had we had a bunch. You know who the Guardian Angels are, right? And the of course we did. Kid yeah. Sliwa. I don't know if you ever worked with them. Did you? No. But, Curtis. Curtis Sliwa. Oh, I heard it. Yeah. yeah. Well, they came to Brockton. I live in Brockton. It's right next door. We were having a lot of issues with violent stuff happening in Brockton. So they were literally, you know, the, the they were the, the Good Samaritans from New York and the subways, and they yep. figured they, they were going to bring this stuff to Brockton. So mm -hmm. they came to Brockton, and they, we were on, Paul, my friend, was on TV, and, mm -hmm. and when he did it, when he took care of, of his situation, he wouldn't just hit somebody, he would just literally body slam them to the floor. Now, yep. I don't know how, I'm sure you guys are good at that, but that's, mm -hmm. that looked to me like the most effective way of getting out of a situation. But again, not everybody's... He, he made himself pretty big from working out. He worked out at 
the gym. That's who I met him. Um, you know, he wasn't huge, but you know, but he made, but he strengthens he strengthened his upper body and his lower body, and he was able to do that. To, you know, to people that were bigger than him, and he, you know, he was a cop too. I think he had, I think he actually was a cop right here in Easton. He had a his his obituary had all kinds of things, you know, that I I read and I was like, wow, I didn't know anything. I didn't know half the stuff that I read about him. He was even engaged to be married, yep. which is terrible. But mm -hmm. so what I'm wondering is when you, I mean, in a, in a match, obviously. I mean, when you have tournaments, is that, is that, is that what it, they consist of? Or is it just basically, you know, just two guys showing off for the, for the public? No. It, a mat, uh, tournament consists, well, Taekwondo, first of all, is a sport. Right. It's an Olympic sport. It is. Okay. So you have to wear padded. Uh, the more advanced tournaments, yeah. they have electronic sensors on. It's called a hogo. Okay. Like electronic sensors? Electronic sensors. Well, wait a minute. What 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 are, what, it's, what purpose do they serve for the sport? Because that's how you get your points. Oh, when okay. You, when you hit somebody, yeah, in the hogo area, or the head, yeah, it registers. It registers. So, like, that's amazing. I never knew that. Wow. The, the Olympics do it. Yeah. If you watch the Olympics, that's uh, it's all I, electronic scoring. Wow. Is that, that sounds like it's a whole 21st century thing. I'm sure. They, what did they used to do before they had that? Before the referees. The, Refereps, okay, yep. this is much Which better. I'm, uh, I've refereed tournaments. <laughs> okay, all right. So basically that's just, you know, whacking each other. And then, well, it's not just whacking, it's, 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 it's it takes a, a certain amount of skill. Right. So, uh, so what is, how would you compare the, your martial arts to MMA? I mean, they got MMA to, is totally different. It is totally different. That's MMA is, is mixed martial arts, and right. that's exactly what it is. The, those men have, have trained in their boxes, they're, they're martial artists, right. they're, they're judo experts, yep. they, they, they have all a litany of things. Uh, right. that, that is an amazing sport in itself. It is. That, that, that's, that's, that's no joke. Yeah, but that's, not, but that's, not, that's different than what you guys no, do. No, Ma a Any martial arts, if you go to a correct school, which w w we believe we do, Master yeah. Hong is, and, and I understand your, your theory thinking a big guy is strong and this and that, and we all grew up with Arnold Schwarzenegger was the, you know, what the, he just you, got attacked you the other day. At, yeah, and, and he got attacked too, yeah. And that, um, but, but most martial artists, they, they train you not to fight. Right. We're trained to, to fight, however, like anything, you're trained to walk away from fights. Right, exactly. Um, and as far as size yeah. being a, an issue, it's not, it's not a thing. My, if, I, if I brought Master Hong in here, you, you would sit there and say to yourself going, that guy's what? No, no, I you know believe I mean? him. And uh, let me tell you, well, he's, he, he, he's a grandmaster. Okay, and, and, seventh degree. Yeah, wow. and he, uh, he, he can do things like I've never seen in my life. He can break cans, you know, with his hands, with He'd his feet. He'd probably break this table. Definitely. Okay, yeah, I'm just thinking that you know, this is a pretty hard table. Yeah. Well, as a matter, well, I mean, I know that because a, few, a couple of weeks ago I had a guy in here named Sal Del Greco who's, who's a small guy and he does martial arts and he, he could take care of himself. So, yeah, you know, I mean, he was yep. just smaller than you yep. than all of us. I mean, yep. I... And when he was talking about it, he, you know, again, a lot of the people I interview mm -hmm. do films and they do stunts. Yeah. Yeah. I've had several people in here that, are, that do martial arts just to help them, you know, in the, yeah. doing stunts from films. Because you guys aren't actors, so mm -hmm. you don't do that. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever trained people for that that are in films that you're aware of? No, not at all. No. Really? no. But, okay. I mean, if you want to talk about size difference, if you want to, and you, you mentioned judo. When right. we were talking on the way up, Jimmy Pedro. Okay. Now there's one there. He's an Olympic. Okay. He's a gold medal. See, he's the best in the United States. For judo. For judo. Okay. And if you saw him again, small guy. I like to hear this okay. because you know it makes he, he's me. He's a small guy. I'll he's be honest with you. I, will, I get up every day, and, and I, I don't know. I mean, I may eventually. I'm, I'm almost 60 years old. I don't know. You guys are probably a little younger. I'm guessing. Yeah. But. I mean, one I, of us is. What's that? One of us is. Okay. Well, I, see, I don't <laughs> know. It's hard. To, one. <laughs> I, well, I, I thought you might have been. But the thing is, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I get around okay. Nobody, I, I don't usually get picked on as much as I used to. But I still look at people, and sometimes I think, what if, uh, you know, what if, he, what if I look at this guy the wrong way? What's, what's going to happen? Am I going to be able to handle that? Mm -hmm. And I think about that all the time. I mean, I admit it. It's always in my, it's, it's in my head all the time. I'm, I got the show. I love it. People are very happy that, you know, to come and be interviewed by me. But I always mm -hmm. ask myself, what could ha is there any chance that something could, some, some unscrupulous individual could look at me and think, uh, you know, this guy, let's, I, I, I don't like this guy for whatever reason, mm -hmm. where he looks or whatever, and could something, can, can, am I, you know, should I maybe do something to him to let him know that? And then, I, and then I'd be, you know, what am I going to do? So I'm always thinking that. I, you know, I, I don't have a cesspool with it, but I do yeah. think about it. So sure. I mean, that's why I like to hear that 
small people, and I'm not small, I'm, mid, I'm about mid-size, I'm about You're one a, Average size. Yeah. Right, right. To, can, can handle stuff like, you know, can be able to take care of themselves. It's just an inspiration to me. Even oh, absolutely. Though, Absolutely. Yeah. And then on the flip side, yeah. I, I grew up with a guy named Dickie Kimba. He's yep. very famous around here. Yep. He was a phenomenal um, uh, kickboxer growing up. And, okay. and I was very good friends with my father and so forth. He was actually the one, when you talk about things, uh, different events, he worked at the Middleton Jail. He was part of, a, I don't know the exact term of it, but it was like, like a gang apprehension. Whenever anything happened, there was a fight in the jail. Yeah. They would call Dickie and the guys, and they would walk, they would go in like SWAT guys. Wow. And, and when, when Dickie was called, it was all set. We, we, we were all done. There was no more, we, we didn't have to worry about them hurting anybody after that. Wow. You know, he was, you know, he was probably about 250 or so. Yeah. Give or take. He, right, he well, was that's, just, that's he a big was a guy mammoth of a man. Yeah. yeah, he was a mammoth of a man. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, but then, like I said, then you got Jimmy Pedro, who's the complete opposite, and I tell you, both of them were phenomenal in what they did. Sure, you know, I mean, you know opposite ends they, of the they are definitely the you know one of the experts. Okay, well, I know a guy who's about who's like five six, one forty. His name's Kenny, Kenny Wagner, and he, yeah. I don't know if you know him, but if you've heard of him, but he was he was absolutely legendary in our area for for, mm -hmm. for karate. Mm -hmm. and, and what happened was, you know, in the 80s, he used to kick the crap out of the bag at the gym that I used True. to go to. And he was amazing. And one time, I guess in 1989, he was attacked by five guys at a bar in Norwood. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, he pretty, and I saw him afterwards, and he took care of himself. Yep. Unfortunately, though, what, he happened, what I think happened to him was he hyperextended his hip. He kicked the bag mm -hmm. so hard that he needed to have two hips replaced. Mm -hmm. And now he's like 66, 67, and I don't think he yep. can do karate anymore. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'd worry about if, I, if somebody like, you know, like myself were to take it up and you know be great at kicking the bag, but then the, the, you know the the underside is what could happen and what could could the aftermath be could be bad. I mean, like, I mean, you guys haven't been injured. Have you guys ever gotten injured doing doing your, your sports? Oh, well, you, you, you definitely get injured. You do, but, okay. but you got to understand yep. uh, any type of martial art. Look, obviously, me with the judo class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for me, it, what I learned more out of it is respect. Right, of course. Loyalty. Yep. Um, I learned how to walk away from, from things. It gave me uh, a, a, you know, a sense of uh, well-being yep. and, and pride and so forth. Okay, so, wow. You know, that, that, that helped me. Um, you know, not every, you know, my father told, told me, and I was telling Master Ray on the way up, there's always going to be somebody tougher. Of course. No matter who it is. Right. And a gun stops everything. Right. Exactly. So no matter how good you are, and, and we were raised, you know, with the, with to me was Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, I and mean, that's how we grew up, you right. know. And, and then the Arnold Schwarzenegger's for that type, you know right. what I mean? And you know, uh, for me, I I just love Taekwondo for what it does for my training, for my mental, everything. Yep. You know, nobody's going to be a is going to be the the end all be all of anything. Exactly. And I was with Dave. Okay. When he started. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as he advanced, he was very determined mm -hmm. to yep. get his black belt. Yep, of course. So I spent even more time with him, mm -hmm. and uh, along with Grandmaster Hong. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he did it. He persevered. Yep. And, uh, That's great. I mean, so you. I mean, it's a great life. If you. I mean, and and you both. And here you are. You both looking pretty healthy, and you know, and you and you continue to do it, and you'll do it for the rest of your lives and yep. enjoy it. It is a lifetime. Uh, yes. Of course, it is. It's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And once you get that, nobody can take it away from you. Uh, true. You know? Well, guess what, guys? We're under five minutes to go. Sweet. It is. So what I want you to do in the remaining time, you can give shouts out to people, Master Hong, anyone at your, at your gyms, and your friends, family, kids, and then we'll wrap the show up. So go ahead. Uh, I'd like to thank Grandmaster Hong. Grandmaster Hong. His diligence, his perseverance, and for helping, helping us. Okay. It's the way of life. Yeah, and I'd like to, again, second that, and also I'd like to put, put a big plug in there for uh, um, Master Hong and also his school at Sun uh, Taekwondo in Danvers. Great school. If you're, if you're looking for a, uh, a place to go, that's the place to go for me. Is it, is it on Route 1? No, it's right in Maple Street. Okay. Downtown Danvers. Yeah, I can sure you can Google it. I'm just, yeah, it's yeah, right downtown. next to Rocco's Pizza. You can't miss that. Okay, right, right. I, I haven't been up to that way for a while, but yeah. I'm just, yeah. I just think when I think of Danvers and I think of North of Boston, I think of Route One because yep, that's of that's one of the you know the main it's the main north south yep. road. Well, well I, listen. So what is so his summer's coming up. You guys get any big tournaments in the, in the future? Th there'll no. be tournaments throughout the summer. Okay. Yes. There's usually 
annual tournaments, so they're the same time okay. every year. Are you uh, the ones I participated? Yeah. I'm. I don't really compete anymore. Okay. I, I referee. You referee. Okay. So uh, it, it's it, mostly the younger people, like you know, teenagers and oh yes. teenagers, yes. Yes. Yeah. young twenties. Okay. Uh, but the black belts are amazing to watch because yeah. I know a different set of rules that they go by. Yep. Like head contact. Yep. Head contact is allowed with the black. <laughs> wow. So uh, it's fast it's, and it's it's, it's furious. Yeah. 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 Are you guys ever planning a trip to the to the York, to the Asia to you know see see the roots of your of your, of your uh, learns well, learnings? F funny, you should say that again. Is is my son is from Seoul, Korea. I adopted my son. From oh, Korea. okay. In 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 Master Hong, Grandmaster Hong actually is from Seoul, Korea. Okay. And ironically, they both started when they were six years old. Wow. Um, in my in at some point in time, I'll probably bring my son Maxwell there. That would be to great. See it. Okay. Um, it's, it's on my bucket list of things to do. I, I, I would love to bring Grandmaster Hong with me. Okay. I think that would be really cool. Um, Maybe we'll know. go with you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's well, one of those things. Well, listen, I hope you guys had fun with my show tonight. Absolutely. Hopefully, we talked about a lot of things. We should get some good footage. And on that note, we're going to wrap it up. You ready to? We're ready to wrap it up. All right, folks. Another great episode of Topic Time. See you next time. Coming up. See you later. Thank you.